Hello everyone. Let me get all of my things going here. Let everything connect. Here I am. Make sure I am muted. Yep, I am muted. <clears throat> Hopefully not muted to you. And let me pin the person next behind me, after me, is Tammy, the ever-popular Tammy with Crafty Peep. How is everyone tonight? It is Wednesday, April 20th. Where has this year gone already? I don't know. What's going on? How many times did you send it? Hey, JJ. What? What's going on? What? Go off and get back on, Joe. Go off, please. Oh, I removed it. Hmm. I wonder if all the comments are going to do that, JJ. It only shows once on my side, so I don't think so. I think it's just the TV. Okay. But wait for people to hop on. Okay. okay, so here we are. Hi, Bethwin. How are you? Let's see. I only see your comment once. Joe hopped on and said hello, and his comment went about 50 times up the screen. So we were trying to figure out what was going on. I'm not sure what's going on. Um, hey, JJ. So I only see JJ's once. Hop back on, Joe, and see. Hi, all, hi, all, hi, all, hi, all, hi. It did it by itself like 50 times. All right, we're going to start to check on it, I guess. Okay. All right. I think it was just. A glitch. Yeah, just a little glitch or something. Okay. So. I kind of changed things up at the last minute tonight, and I'm going to show, I'm going to attempt to show a little bit of cricket, and I'm going to try to answer any questions that may arise, because I, um, I used my cricket for tonight's craft, and um, let me start with my introduction. So I'm Michelle with Design and Vine, and I am crafting this evening on the Crafty Creators Community um, channel. I almost get ready to say page every time. Um, and um, if you are not watching me from my page, um, you're likely watching me from the Crafty Community. Crafty Creators Community page. I had a week off, y'all, because I hurt my back, and I'm all discombobulated now. Anyway, um, so um, if you are watching me on my page, please hit the thumbs up and um, make sure you go and um, subscribe and follow the Crafty Creators Community page, as well as Tammy with Crafty Peep on Facebook as well as YouTube. Um, she has her own YouTube channel as well as the Crafty Creators Community. She is one of the founders along with Christy with Christy's Crafty Cottage. So please, if you will, follow and subscribe to Christy on YouTube as well as Facebook. Okay, when you are done watching, I'm I'm I was starting to be better, Bethwin, and um, I was supposed to start physical therapy to just kind of get the right movements going on. They wanted me to do a couple weeks of physical therapy. And I, I took my med and then they didn't have an appointment till like May 5th or something. So I ended the med and now it's starting to hurt again. And they can only watch me from my page. Okay, that's good to know. That's why when I go to Crafty Creators Community, I have a hard time finding people. Okay. Um, now I know. <laughs> we live and learn, right? So um, I was starting to feel better, and then my, my med, I went on the, I was on prednisone on a steroid for a little bit, and I 
went on the weaning off ones and I took my last pill yesterday or the day before yesterday and woke up yesterday and it was hurting all over again. So I'm pretty sure I need that physical therapy, but every time I'm sitting at my desk, I'm uh, with the heating pad on my back. So anyway, I am going to go ahead and get started and um, let me know if you have any questions as I go along and if I don't catch them live I will catch them um, when I go through all of the replay feed and see um, if there's any questions out there I can answer them then so I'm going to go over and do something different and I'm keeping my fingers and toes crossed that this is going to work so here is my Cricut machine I have it up on my crafting desk at the moment and I do chalk couture, so I customized mine. But I am going to change my screen for just a moment. And you'll hear me talking, but you won't see me until I jump back over to that. And let me just wait for this to catch up so I can make sure you see what I see. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, you do. Okay, so this is Cricut Design Space. And to start tonight's craft, in order for me to prep, I had to cut some things that I wanted to use. And I don't always find what I'm looking for in Design Space. This, um, this one right here, well, you can't see my arrow, so I'm just going to kind of click on it so that you can see. This one that I just clicked on is a design space bumblebee, honeybee, okay? And it'll catch up hopefully in a moment and you'll see what I'm talking about. And, <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> That'll help. Um, okay, so there's the honeybee. And this is actually part of one that I went out on Etsy and found. So if you can't find what you're looking for in design space, you can go out to Etsy and do, S, um, these files in Cricut are called S.SVG files. S as in Sam, V as in Victor, G as in golf. Um, so they're .SVG files. And I needed a honeycomb that was dripping with honey and Cricut Design Space didn't have one, so I went out and I got what you see there. There's four different layers of the, the um, honeycomb. And then all the way to the left, um, where it says My Projects, and it has a new project, the one to the right of that, where there, I'm going to click on that. And we're going to just do, I'm going to go in and customize this one. The fifth layer on this one was actually these three Bs, and um, then I added the words busy as a bee up at the top. So I'm going to give this just a second to catch up. Yes, dot SVG, that's correct, Bethwin. So I clicked on customize. We're actually in design space right now, and I've already cut these out while well, you can't see okay I'll show you in a minute when it comes back to my camera I've already cut all of this out and put it together with the exception of the honeycomb but all I have to do from this point is click on make it and then define what it is that I want to print and I'm going to show you that in just a moment now I have the the two that you see on the bottom left where the bee is cut out it's like the negative of the bee. Those I used so that I could trim off the wings and legs and have different layers of the bee. And that'll all make sense in a minute when I show you my final bees. So the part, the part that you could get away with using just as it is are the words, of course, and then the, the actual bee cutouts. So when I use black cardstock, what you're going to see print or cut out is the actual bees that you see off to the right by themselves. Okay, so I'm going to click on make it so you can see what happens here. 
and I have my machine hooked up. Now, I don't want to print this page that comes up because those are the negatives that I've already used. And for my, my purpose here, I want to show you what this looks like printed out. So just the bees themselves. And I keep saying printed, but it's cut. So we're going to cut out just the bees. Okay, so I'm going to come back to, and there's the doggos. I'm going to come back to my video for a moment so that I can show you. I've got my, my Cricut on and ready, okay? And I already, this is where I've already cut out, okay? So I'm going to stick this aside for just a second, and I'm going to pull my machine back. It may go off the screen just a little bit. I don't want it to fall off my desk because I need to put this in here. So I've got my paper on here and I, I could have trimmed this and saved just this part, but for me it's easier just to save the whole thing. And all I'm doing is setting, it, this is my, um, my light grip mat. Let me just show you. This is a blue light grip mat so that it doesn't tear up my paper crazy when I go to take this off. And I, there's two little slots here and I'm gonna stick the mat in. And then when I go over and I, I'm gonna go back, now that I have this sitting here, I'm gonna go back to my live screen again. And I'm gonna show you the next step is to click on continue it's going to find my maker and then it's going to ask me for what type of paper I'm using and I can browse all materials but I've set this light cardstock as a favorite because I do a lot of cardstock printing so I'm going to select that okay and then this screen comes up and it's literally this simple guys this these few steps that you see and you can watch this on replay and, and pause it and and do whatever to make your little bee if you want to. You can leave this on for it to cut at the default pressure, less pressure, or more pressure. I'm gonna click on more because I wanna make sure the cut goes through all the way. It's just a habit that I'm used to. And then I'm gonna come back to my OBS and switch you back over to the live so you can see my my Cricut feed button is blinking, okay? So I'm gonna click on that. Hi, Gia. Okay, and it pulled in my paper, okay? And now my C is printing, uh, uh, blinking, I'm sorry. My, my little C Cricut symbol is blinking. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna press that and it's going to pull in my paper <laughs> boot me out of the way. It, it reads what's in there and then it starts printing or cutting. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so used to being a techie with a printer. Um, so the Cricut is actually cutting the bees right now. I'm going to let it do its thing for a second. Hi, Tammy. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Silly girl. All right, so it's cutting my B. And it, it, it shouldn't take long. Let me see what percentage it's on real quick here. So I'll show you what I can look at here on my display. So it's at 29%, 32 Uh-oh, Tammy's supposed to be somewhere else. I, I got you covered, girl. Everyone's going to be there. I'll make sure of it. <laughs> Go do your meeting if you have to. <laughs> Thanks, Gia. All 
All right, so we are at 50, nope, 62%. I promise it's gonna catch up on the screen in a second. Is it really? Oh, because they will want to be grabbing at it because it moves in and out, in and out, huh? Is that right, Bethlyn? So every time I did something with Cricut, everybody was like, um, can you show us how you do it? Show us how you do it. And literally, cardstock on the mat, file up, you click on make it. Oh no, you're fine, girl. You're fine. We are at, it says 76 to you right now, but it's at 100%, so. I'm going to leave it for just a second. So I can show you what it looks like on my end. <laughs> yes. You have to lock yourself in a room with your Cricut, I guess, to do it. All right, so here we go. 100% waiting for the screen to catch up. And then you'll see a little check mark. And now I will switch back down so you can see the actual Cricut machine. Okay, so here we are. And now it's flashing for me to, this is the feed button. So when I press this, it's gonna spit my, push my um, mat out, okay? And I don't know, yep, you can see it at an angle there. You see how it cut the bees? Now I'll show you in just two seconds. Let me close out of design space. And maybe we won't have so much of a lag. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my machine and put it aside and put my bees down. And you guys can go ahead and eat. I've got this. I'm going to move my Cricut machine back over to my desk. Okay. Now, the next step would be to grab your weeding tool. Okay. And we're not going to weed this because it's paper and it's going to kind of weed itself. So all I'm going to do as a first step is simply carefully peel this up. Careful not to rip any bee legs and wings off. So I'm just gonna pick up the paper basically, completely off of the mat. And we're left with what you see there. Now, let me lift this up so you can see you can see that the bee still, it looks like a solid bee and it doesn't have all the little cutouts of the stripes and stuff, right? But as I go to lift this off the paper, and this is where you need your weed tool to get underneath it, you're just gently gonna kind of go underneath. Let me lift this up again and show you. If I can get it. I'm just gently gonna go underneath like this from side to side as I go along. And as I pull and lift, and I'm only gonna do one B for, for lack of time so that you can see, it's gonna lift the B and I'm holding it at the same time so that any parts that I don't want, if they feel like sticking, they can stay right on the mat. And I'll show you what I mean in just a second by that. So I'm going to go back under here because I don't want my little wings ripping. And if it wants to grip onto any of those little pieces and keep them, I'm good with that. So see, it did keep some of the little pieces just like that. And this is the B. Whoops. Let me get this in my hand right and get it in the right direction. Some of the pieces are left in and all you have to do is take your little weeding tool and push 
push through on it just like so and you may have to tug a little in little spots here and there so there's his body there's a little piece of his body up there that I need to poke out and you're going to do this with all the, all of the areas that were cut because we don't we want the wings to be mostly that see-through pattern so I'm just going to kind of poke through and then grab them from the bottom and we'll finish this one B and then I'll show you what I've put together. So paper is a little easier in my opinion than working with vinyl on a Cricut. So you can make a lot of 3D items with um, paper on your Cricut. And vinyl is not difficult to work with, but it's the same technique. You just have to transfer it because it's sticky on one side using the transfer paper. So it can um, take a little longer is all. So there, I am so not good with this guys. There is our B. Let me bring it up to this camera real quick. So you can see, there's our B on black cardstock, okay? Now, and I can clean this off later and remove the other two bees because I'm not gonna throw these away. I will use them. So I'm just gonna set this aside for now. And I'm gonna show you what I've put together and we're gonna finish putting it together for this evening. So I, I already showed you that I had um, on the Cricut, I had different layers. So these are my bees, and the, this is my honeycomb. So it's got the bottom layer, it's got this layer. So this, is, this is all for the drip effect. And we're gonna put um, double-sided tape, and then we're gonna put the bees actually on the honeycomb. And this is, this is the same exact bee as this. All I did was take the solid one and use white paper and the solid one and used yellow paper and I, I cut the wings off and put them on the back of the black and I cut the yellow off for the body and put it behind the black So because I wanted this particular detail on the bee. You could very easily leave it just like this and some of that yellow will show through. So it all depends on the look that you're going for. I did my bees in three different layers. Okay, so that's a quick Cricut lesson. We are going to try to put this together now. I have a 12 by 12 board that I painted black around the edges and on the back side. I wanted a really finished look. And what we're going to do to put this together is we're going to take, and I do have the words busy as a bee up there. Um, I am going to take and put this together on the board in the layers the way it's supposed to be and then we're going to take it back apart and put it back together with tape in between each layer, foam tape to be exact. All right, so then I'm going to have a B here, here, and here. Okay, now to get the 3D effect, I went to Dollar Tree and I got the, the package where you get three rolls of foam double-sided sticky um, tape. And it's, it's thicker than just double-sided tape. It has a thickness to it, and that's what's going to give us our 3d effect yes um, I believe so to get that 3d effect the more layers the better and I I laid these layers one on top of the other with regular double-sided tape that I I just happened to have from my drafting days um, but you can literally um, and I may start backwards with this. In fact, I think that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna use double-sided tape on the back of this to put it um, on the board so that if I ever wanna change it, I can just peel it right off. Um, so I'm gonna use the regular double-sided tape on this. And I'm just gonna come down along the edges. And it's good to use a tape that's acid-free 
Um, if you've ever done like scrapbooking, you know to use tape that's acid free on the back of pictures. It's the same with paper so that you you're, it's not leaking or bleeding through. And I'm going to come crossways with this. And I can do this just flat out like this on the bottom layer because I'm going to use my weeding tool to get this off. Because um, it, there's no holes in it, so it's not going to show. But the other layers, I'm going to kind of go backwards on them. All right. So it looks like there's nothing there, but there is. My tape is there. I'm gonna get this layer. Easy peasy. I love working with um, cardstock with my Cricut. You can do so, so much. Okay, so my drips are gonna be coming down like this. So I wanna kinda of get this doesn't have to be perfect, but as centered as possible, straight as possible. We all know the bees aren't going to be perfect out there in the real world. Now I'm going to turn these layers upside down because I want to work on, I think I want to do the first layer. I guess it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to go with this. Okay. So I can put bigger pieces on this one as well because you can literally put them in the areas where, um, where it's not gonna show through, but it will raise it up, right? And I probably could have used one of the wider tapes on this because it's not gonna show. The goal here is to try to get it in places where it's gonna, um, like all around, it's gonna hold down your edges as close as possible. I'm gonna do one more right here. Maybe one more. Okay, right here. Now this tape is raised, so I need to get under that layer just so, and peel this back so that the tape is exposed. Ooh, that's sticky. I was afraid it wasn't gonna be sticky enough, but it is. And I also wanna to try to accomplish a bead hanger, but I'm not sure I'll have time for that. I did pre-paint the beads, black and yellow. Black and yellow, black and yellow. Okay. The raised one kind of looks like you can grab it easier and you can sort of kind of. So I kind of um, wanted to do something a little different tonight and I was gonna paint, but it really was, I, in my head, it was gonna take too long. So I made sure I went ahead and painted beforehand and I just used, um, I'll show you. I used Apple Barrel White, so I have all the backside removed. I used um, Apple Barrel, hold on, oh, it's over here. I used Apple Barrel White paint, and I used Home Decor Folk Art Chalk Black. Okay, and I went, I lined this with, um, my duct tape, my green tape, and then um, I probably could, should put more down here for the regular tape. Um, I went ahead and um, peeled the tape up after I put the black on. Oh. I don't want to bend in my paper, but this isn't coming off very easily. Come on. There. I got you. 
Gotcha. There, that's a little bit. Oh, it's not sticking to my paint. Okay, we might need some glue. Um, here we go. That tape is really old. So, yeah. That tape is old. So I'm just going to go in with some... I'm going to go right over this. And use Elmer's glue on the bottom layer, okay? I've got some glue on there. That's okay. It'll dry. All right. And this is the direction that I want to be. Okay. And now, drips going down. We're going to put this layer on. And we're going to do the same thing with this one. And this tape is brand new, so I'm not concerned about it not sticking. It's very sticky. Hi, Phyllis Willis. Hi. And Judah. Hi, guys. Hi, Phyllis. Now, when we get down to this last layer, I'm probably only going to be able to put this double-sided tape where the bees are. I can do some tinier pieces where the drips are, but um, I'm not going to be able to put a lot. In fact, I'm having to go smaller already. Okay, I got it. Uh-huh. I at least want to get the bees on here for you guys. there. Hi, Tanya. I didn't know you were on here. Okay, I think we've got them all. I'm going to line this one up. can see already it's giving that 3d effect next we are going to go to this final layer and we're going to put just little pieces I can go big on the B the big B anyway but then I'm gonna oh well I, that wasn't the big B that was the medium B this is the big B I can go big on him then go small on the small B, and then go really small on a couple of the drips over here. So I'm just going to cut a piece off, and then I'm going to put it down and cut it while it's on there, making, oh, making sure my little drip stuck to it, not to cut the drip off. There. And it's okay, when I was looking at the lady that actually created something similar, hers um, showed a little from the sides, and that's okay if your little tiny pieces show from the side. You do want to get as much as you can down on it so that it sticks in all the right places. Okay, there... And then one more, I'm going to put one right here. Okay, now, remove the back. I'm 
And I think since the glue worked well on the bottom layer, I'm probably going to do that with my Busy as a B letters as well. I wasn't sure how I was going to put them down, and I painted some blocks white in case I needed to put them on blocks, but I don't think I'm going to do that. And you can even go thicker with your thickness of the foam tape um, if you want it raised even more. There's different thicknesses of the actual tape. This is, I'm really surprised how strong this Dollar Tree tape is. How, how sticky it is, I'm impressed. Okay. Almost done. These little ones are a little harder. It's actually easier I'm finding with my nail than it is with the, um, at least on the foam, it's easier. Okay, hi Tia. Okay, now let's get the drips going downward and line this up. This is my first go at a 3D project. Oh my gosh. All right. Um, you know what? I'm going to do glue for my bees. Oh, you scared me. Oh my goodness, I jumped out of my skin. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Wow, she dropped the laundry basket by accident, and wow, oof. It was the gate. Okay, oh, it was the gate? Mm -hmm. The doggo gate. I guess it was my big boogie. So the big B goes on the big um, B, and you see how I didn't tape the wings down? So if you kind of want that translucent look, you can raise them up a little bit. Okay, medium size B goes here because they're just a working away, right? Our bees are worker honey bees and they got to work on making that honey. And then we got our little bee. Little bee goes right here. So there's a spot for everything. Let me just lift their wings up just a tad. Like so. And this is what we have so far. Thank you guys. Okay. So if you missed it in the beginning, I um I showed you how I made the bees on my cricket. And um there's even a link in my um description on um there's a link in my description on where to find the file for the bees. So now I have the words busy, busy bee, which would be me, but busy as a bee. And I think I'm just going to glue these right onto the board. And then we're going to make a... Right. I still have a um, I still have a um, a hanger to go, and I also have this ribbon. So if I have enough time, I'll try to make um, a bow if I can. Okay. So I kind of want to just put these where I want them, and then I'll pick them up one by one. I should have made a little exclamation point. Um, maybe I want them down a little bit closer, maybe not as angled. You know, I find when you go at an angle, you can kind of cheat a little bit, if I may give my opinion, because you don't have to have it in a straight line, guys. So you can actually, like, it, you know, not have it perfectly in a straight line. And 
because I'm, I'm older now, and what do you think? B needs to come down just a little bit, right? Is that good? What do you think? Right, Phyllis? That's why I put uh, on my picture for this live, if you go back and watch the replay, <laughs> look at all the little bees, Beth one, how cute. Um, they're cute. They're so much cuter than the Applebee's, the app, not the Applebee's, the Apple product icon bees. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these down where they are and then we will make our little, and you have to be careful with these. See, it's already like wanting to bend. So I'm just going to hit, I'm actually going to, I don't want it to rip guys and it's sticking. I should put it on the surface so that it doesn't rip, but I think I can do this. Just need to get some on the bee. There we go. That's the trick. Put it on your finger and it's okay if some of that purple gets messy because it dries clear. Okay. Just don't glue it to your finger like I just did. All right, get over there. You want some juice, Ella? Go. Okay. Right. okay. I kind of went too much up on that, but that's okay. We're going to fix that. So I'm going to put my A. I actually, you know what, I'm going to switch it just a little bit. I'm going to put my A down here. I'm going to go kind of wonky on this since I went to, I should have turned it toward me. But everything's fixable, guys. Everything. So I'm going to make it really cute. I'm going to do something different. All right. So these letters are just paper. Busy as... A. I can get it to come off my finger. That purple will dry, and then I'm going to come at the same angle with B. So it's just kind of, kind of fun like that. Okay, and if I do do a bow later, it'll go up in this corner nicely. All right. Let's do it the way that works. And even if these letters came apart, I wouldn't freak out because you can, you can literally just place them together and they'll look just fine. All right, now let me get this glue off my fingers and I'll show you what we have. And I can also come back in a little later with a little um, swirly line, like a B line, if you know what I mean. I can print, uh, cut it on my Cricut and do that as well. So that's what we have so far. This is not wanting to stick. We're going to make it stick. There. And now I'm going to work on my bead garland. But if I do a bow, let me just show you do a bow the tails will hang on this side so that will be really cute yes I think we're gonna do that if we have time and if we don't I will do it and take a picture so I am going to do yellow black yellow black 
because we're working with bees. We're going to string it onto jute with our little bead stringer. And we're going to staple it to the back. I'm going to need more on here, but for now, I'm going to put these on. So I just stick this through the bead stringer like so. And then I pull, pull the beads right onto the string, right off of the bead stringer like so. And then I come back. I take my short side out, if I can get it to come out. Take the short side back out, pull the bead stringer off, and I want to come in with black first. Um, maybe not. Let's see. I want yellow to be... I want black to be last. So... When it pulls off onto here, it pulls off right. Okay. I don't want two yellows next to each other, in other words. In fact, this jute is so nice. Uh-oh. Okay. The end of it isn't frayed at all. I could probably string each one of these rather easily, like so. And wouldn't even need my stringer. The stringer is just easier because it's quick. I think you just pull them right on there. You don't have to do them one by one, although you're putting them on the beater one by one, so the threader that is. And the end did fray a little. So this would take a little more time, potentially. Yeah, this is going to be the perfect amount, too. I was worried I didn't paint enough, but I did. All right, so I'm going to pull this through, and I don't want that yellow on there. So I'm going to take the yellow off, and we'll put that on last, and I'll show you why. So now when I pull this on, it's literally going to have my black one first and then I can just string this one on by hand. Get the extra out of the way. All right. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. So I've got quite a bit here. I'm going to pull this back through. I'm going to turn this over. to position this roughly two inches in. I'm going to grab my stapler. That's on there pretty good with just one. What's he doing, babe? No socks. No socks. No, sir, you little sock stealer. I missed. How'd I miss? Guys. No. Nothing came out that time. What's going on? Let's try it one more time. Two came out and they didn't stick. All right. Third time's charm. Here we go. You ready? Guys, if I told you what it did, it, cut, it got just the end here and just the end on that side. So fourth time is going to have to be charm. Let's see. That worked. There we go. I'm going to put another one on the other side. I'll cut this off. Throw these extra staples away so my pups don't get them.
perfect. This is what we have so far, guys. <laughs> okay. How cute is this sign? Oh my gosh. I got some um, paper fuzz going on here. Comes off. All right, now let's see what a girl can do for a bow. I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm thinking about just doing an awareness type bow with tails. Nothing too, too long. We can get the ends of those in a minute. Need some jute string. Did you and JJ eat? Not yet. Not yet. So I think this is how this is done. Phyllis said her brother raises these. Really? Oh my gosh. God bless him, because I would be too afraid to, but I know that there's no reason to be afraid. And I know that it's like, it's so good for the earth. Phyllis said, Phyllis said, if she were a bee, she would want to be the queen bee. Right? Hey, I'm with you on that one. Yes, I could have. Yes, ma'am. In fact, I have vellum and I thought about it, but then I... I kind of um, just went with the white. I'm not sure why. But yeah, vellum would be more translucent for sure. For sure, for sure. Wow, this bow is like a total fail. But you know what? I'm going to stick with it. And I'm going to... You know what? Let me see if I can just tie one. Instead. I used to be such a good bow maker. Right, Joe Borelli? Yeah. I don't know what happened. I got old, I guess. All right, so like I'm tying a shoelace, right? I'm going to come around. No. No. On. Um, hmm. <laughs> Help! Okay, let's see. Um... Oh, I know. Okay. So I do this. I gotta have two loops, right? So I have to do two loops and then, or one loop, and then come around and come through that loop, like my shoe, all the while keeping in mind the direction of the ribbon. I didn't cut it long enough, guys, because it's gonna, it's gonna kerplooey on me. Like that. Yeah. No. Okay, let me try something else. Let me do a loop. So I want tails. You know what? I can add tails. I can add tails. I am going to do this. I'm going to tie it in the middle. What the? What? Holy shit. Jay. Cussing on my live. Yeah, they can. If I can, they can. All right, now I'm going to add tails to this. On the back side. Stick with me for just a minute and I'll show you how I'm going to add tails. Use it. Right? Queen bees over here. Queen bees in the house. All of us are queen bees. Alright, we got tails. We got tails. I'm just going to tie these into the bottom. 
And I know I got an extra thingy over there. I'm going to cut that. Ears and toes crossed that this works and it looks decent. All right. <clears throat> there's a will, there's a way. And the part that came out is the top part, but that's okay. You'll see. In fact, I may just leave it as a shorter tail. Stick hmm? What, Joe? Stick the hero did this thing. Oh, no? Okay, good. Come back around to the back side. And one more time. Okay, now. I'm actually going to do... Five minutes. Five minutes, five minutes. A double knot in the back so that that stays. Oh goodness, the back side isn't going to show. I may just show you what this will look like and just do a better bow offline. Um, so I'm going to use this as a shorter tail because I think there's a black one too. But you just pull these apart. Like this. Pull the tails down to the bottom. Just wiggle them down there. Like so. And then I've got these in the middle. That's not good. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to do a better bow because this looks god-awful. But you get the general idea of what it would look like if a bow were done properly. Actually, I might be able to hot glue this around the center and give it that center of honeycomb. With the tails hanging down on the side there. Um, I'm definitely going to do a better bow, but this could definitely be wrapped around the center this little extra piece and glued to cover now I know why Christy makes the boat she makes holy moly two minutes two minutes, two minutes. turn this around And you can see I've got room for the tails to hang because the word B ended over there. So if I glue that down right there, with that in the center, that would be kind of okay, right? Thank you, Phyllis. Very cute. Not dry. It's very dry. It's dry cute. Well, hopefully it's dry. The paint and everything is dry, so we know that much. <laughs> um, I may just do um, a Christie bow on here. I call it a Christie bow. What's it called? A shabby chic bow. And um, I'll take a picture of it. I'll use the yellow and the black, and I'll, I'll use some laces. And I stepped on something and some other ribbon, and um, I'll make a prettier bow and stick it over here. <sighs> but I'm going to say, please go join Tammy with Crafty Peep on her page. Yes, it's nice and dry. And um, thank you guys for watching me tonight. And um, again, if you are interested in this, the link is in the description. And don't forget to hit the thumbs up before you leave my page. Um, it helps every little bit. A rag bow. Yes, that's what it's called. I will do a rag bow. And I will include some of this ribbon so that it looks bee-ish. Yes, we want it to look bee-ish if that's a word. 
And um, thank you for watching, everyone. Scoot on over and tell Tammy that Michelle sent you, okay? With Design and Vine. And um, I'll see you over there because I'll be watching too. Thank you, Ivy. Thank you. Thank you. And I will take a picture and post it in Crafty Community, Craft, Crafty Creators Community on Facebook. So check that out too. Check out that page and like us over there and follow the group so that you can see all of the fun creations that we make. And this was easy, guys. You can do it too. And thank you, Beth Wynn. Me too. Thank you. Hugs received. Hugs received. Thank you so much. Have a good night, everyone. I'll see you in chat over on Tammy's page. Tell her I sent you. Good night.